YouTube, I'm Brendan Hodek, and this is yet another episode of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. Today, we are breaking down the voice of Professor Severus Snape from the Harry Potter film series, played by the late, great Alan Rickman. <laughs> Professor Snape was easily one of the best parts of the Harry Potter series. Just in case you haven't seen the films or read the books, I won't spoil anything, but he has a great character arc. Go check them out. He also happens to be a fun and unique voice to do. Good afternoon. Now, what would three young Gryffindors such as yourselves be doing inside on a day like this? Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. The first thing most people notice about Snape's voice is the pitch. Snape has this dark, foreboding nature to him, which makes sense that his voice would also be deep and low-pitched. Something tells me a high-pitched voice like Mickey Mouse wouldn't be as intimidating. Oh boy, Harry Potter! We want to keep this pitch low. More on this in the prosody section, but there isn't a huge pitch range for this either. We certainly hear some inflections, but we can keep everything low pitched and not enter into that head voice range. Do you have any idea how serious this is? You have risked the exposure of our world. Component number two, the larynx. The larynx is an uncomplicated component this time around. We want to keep it neutral. What can make this a bit challenging is that sometimes our larynx moves when trying to adjust other components. So the difficulty is less moving the larynx and more keeping it in one spot. Also, if you feel the sound of the voice is not quite right, perhaps a slight raising or lowering of the larynx might assist you. But for most of you, just keep it neutral. Potter, what are you doing wandering the corridors at night? You ought to be careful. People would think you're up to something. Component number three, the tongue. This is a very important component for this voice, yet it is subtle. The subtlety of it is what makes it so challenging. You have heard me speak many times on Voice Breakdown about tongue clench. If you listen to Snape's voice, and Alan Rickman's in general, there is some tongue clench. The back of the tongue is clenched, pulled back, and lowered, but only to a very small degree. You can hear a tiny amount of that bubble quality. Go too far, it will sound comical. Don't go far enough, and you'll lose the voice entirely. This will take some time to get it just right. Usually, when we are doing a voice with tongue clench, there is a lot of tongue clench. Think, Lusso. or Stitch, or Ozzybear. That bubble-like quality we hear to the voice is caused by the tongue clenching or flexing. Once you find that sound, it is honestly pretty easy to do to the extreme. The hard part is only doing it in slight degrees, but that's exactly what we have to do for this voice. Start doing it to the extreme so you get a sense of it, and then scale it back until you are only clenching and retracting it slightly. Unless you wish to poison him, and I assure you I would have the greatest sympathy if you did, I cannot help you. Component number four, the soft palate. For Snape, I do hear a bit more nasal resonance than a typical voice would have. To accomplish that, we want to lower the soft palate. Like the tongue, however, this is subtle. Play with the amount you are lowering or raising the palate until you get it just right. But do think about sending a bit of that sound into the nasal cavity. How extraordinarily like your father you are, Potter. He too was exceedingly arrogant, strutting about the castle. Component number five, articulation. Snape has very precise articulation. We want to be careful to enunciate each sound fully. There are two sounds to pay particular attention to. The first would be the t sound. Snape often over-articulates this sound. It is common that when words end with a t sound, such as the word fate, that the t does not pop. This popping is known as aspiration. Notice I said fate and not fate. But for Snape, he will pop those T sounds whenever he gets the chance. The second sound to keep in mind would be R. 
Snape's speech is non-rhotic, meaning that R sounds at the ends of words are often dropped or turned into vowels. Harry's last name is a good example of both of these sounds. While Brendan Hodek would say Potter, Snape would say Potter. You just bought yourself a month's detention. Expelliarmus! <laughs> Component number six, prosody. Throughout the films, Snape seems very mysterious and seems to have malicious intent. This is strongly reflected in his prosody. His rhythm is often very slow, careful, and controlled. He chooses his words very wisely. Be sure to stretch out vowel sounds, keep the overall rate slow, and don't be afraid to have decently long pauses. We also hear this a bit in the melodic changes. Sometimes we hear very little pitch changes at all. The voice is almost monotone. But then there is often a slight lilt at the ends of his questions that show a hint of sarcasm. If you keep things foreboding, You'll have his prosody just right. Mr. Potter, our new celebrity. Tell me, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? You don't know? Well, let's try again. Where, Mr. Potter, would you look if I asked you to find me a bizarre? And what is the difference between monkshood and wolfsbane? Pity. Clearly, fame isn't everything, is it, Mr. Potter? Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. We want to have a low pitch for this voice with a fairly restricted pitch range. Component number two, the larynx. Keep the larynx neutral. Component number three, the tongue. The tongue should be slightly clenched, slightly retracted, and slightly lowered in the back. Component number four, the soft palate. Lower the soft palate to achieve a bit of nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. Be precise in your sounds, especially the t sound, making sure it pops. Drop R sounds at the ends of words. Component number six, prosody. Keep his prosody slow, careful, controlled, and mysterious with sarcastic inflections along the way. Thank you for watching Voice Breakdown episode number 49. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. In fact, next episode is going to be a very special one as we will be celebrating our 50th episode. What do we have in store? We'll just have to find out. See you next time. Potter, our new celebrity.